She recollects fragments of sensual experiences from her youthful past with three actual men in her life who had been her lovers. The thrust of the novel is drawn out of the fact that Kathleen decides to accept one of these men as her lifetime mate. The one she had taken to her bed this night, the very one who shares her seven minutes. Not until the, the last page, while she is gasping her love for him in the final throes of her passion, does she call out and reveal the name of the one she has chosen. You see, through her vast sexual experience, she has managed to liberate a sensitive but potentially impotent man, the man she honestly loved. In writing The Seven Minutes, I finally found freedom myself. Just as I had hoped I might liberate others from fear and guilt and shame. Do you know of any other readers for which it has performed this service? The words in the seven minutes freed a young man only today and enabled him to confide to me the truth about himself, a truth he has told no other person until now. Jerry Griffith was not driven to commit rape by reading this book. He did not try to violate Sherry Moore against her will. He tried but at Sherry's own invitation, but he failed then, as he had always failed before, and as he would fail today. Because you see, Jerry Griffith was then, was before, and even today is still sexually impotent. He is incapable of attaining an erection. Miss Cumberland, did the verdict for acquittal surprise you? What surprised me more was the very fact that I was able to reveal myself in court. There was testimony about your supposed suicide. Uh, you look pretty good to me right now, so obviously you're alive and kicking. Did you ever really try to kill yourself? Well, that whole incredible story was arranged by a poet friend of mine, a loyal and dear friend named Sean O'Flanagan. It was simple enough for him to uh, write and plant the obituary of J.J. Jadway. Cassie McGraw arranged a private memorial service for the fictitious Jadway. I found it wiser to be somewhere else. Uh, Miss Cumberland, what made you decide to renounce the Jadway identity? Well, I had an offer from a Hollywood producer, someone I had met in Paris, to appear in The Gold Diggers, of 1938. Anyway, I went to Hollywood, made gold diggers, and you know the rest. <laughs> be nice. Do you want? I'll be right back. Oh, Mr. Barrett, I don't know if you heard me with all the noise after the verdict, but I did congratulate you. I appreciate that, sir. You won the preliminary. You got the seven minutes off the hook. But the main event is still murder one, and I intend to prosecute Perkins to the full limit of the law. Jerry Griffith has a debt as well. As an accomplice, he shares the responsibility for the crime. He won't run from that. When he has his day in court, I'll be standing right next to him. You proved that one of my witnesses perjured himself and that another one unwittingly lied. But you didn't prove, at least not to me, that this filthy book belongs in a decent household. And Jadway or Cumberland, I still believe the seven minutes is obscene and harmful and should have been found guilty. And as for the author of that perverted book, Constance Cumberland stands as a black stain in our society. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Barrett, such books are dangerous and should not be published because they can hurt immature, disturbed adults. Even worse, they can overstimulate a child before he's ready to accept his sex thoughts as natural and drive him into damaging sexual fantasy. In other words, Mr. Duncan, you feel that all literature and all ideas should be aimed at satisfying the 12-year-old reader. You're a pitiful hypocrite and a political opportunist to boot. You spout your clever rhetoric about God, mother, and country, and yet you connive and scheme without regard to anyone but yourself. It amazes me that an intelligent man cannot direct his energies and resources into what is good for the community he's supposed to protect. He instead, spends his time racing off to court, seeking a ban on those things he arbitrarily feels is bad for us. You've got your goddamn nerve. You win one lousy case, you think you're Lee Bailey. Let me tell you one thing. As long as there are books like The Seven Minutes or anything else I feel jeopardizes the moral fiber of this community, I'll keep fighting them. Fair warning, but as long as you keep strong-arming yourself ahead, I'll be fighting you. Maggie, if you knew all along about Jerry's sexual problem, if you knew he was incapable of rape, why the hell didn't you say something? Because I wasn't all that certain that he was impotent on the night of the so-called rape. Where did Jerry and Miss Cumberland finally get together? At your house. Yesterday morning, while you were still in Chicago, I took the chance of pretending to him that I knew the truth about his night with Sherry Moore. At that point, Jerry broke down and confessed everything. 
Miss Cumberland was really touched. She said if she could give Jerry the courage to stand up and confess the truth, then perhaps she herself would find the courage to do the same in court. Maggie, you're beautiful. Just beautiful. Listen, if you're really so grateful, how about a little victory celebration? You know I don't drink anything stronger than Coke. And I also know you've given up cigarettes and cyclomates because you're only 30 and want to live to be 100. I was thinking of something a lot healthier. To Michael Barrett, I salute you on your deserved victory, and I recommend that you enjoy this vintage wine in the spirit that it is given. Beware of Greeks. Bearing gifts. I also recommend to you the wisdom of Charles Lamb. To wit, he is no lawyer who cannot take two sides. When you have time, I would like to interest you in my side of the coin. You could find it extremely profitable. Who knows? You could be senatorial material. Best Luther Yerky. <laughs> Luther Yerky. Young lady, I feel it's only fair to tell you what I'm thinking about doing is against the law. And what are you thinking about doing? I can't tell you that. It's against the law, too. Suddenly, I got this overpowering urge to break the damn law myself. Well, we could both get into a lot of trouble. I know a very good lawyer. Aside from notoriety. What else do you want out of my life? Would you believe the next seven minutes? 